Hi, I'm Christy Overton Johnson, and today I want to encourage your heart, equip your mind, and empower you to live a victorious life. I call these segments Victorious Living Moments because I believe God has just desires for us to live a life of victory. And that doesn't mean that it's always easy, but it does mean that we can come to a place where if we're walking with God in an intimate relationship with Him, we can be victorious over the things that takes this world out. We can live in a life of peace and joy and in, live a life of impact and influence in every season of our life. And it is the desire of our ministry at Victorious Living Magazine and our prison outreach and also through my personal teachings like these to, um, to just help people experience that victory. And the last uh, two videos that have been a part of this series, we're calling it Intimacy with God. And we talked about in the first video about coming to a place of surrender where you trust God and you say, God, I want you to see into me, into me, see. And then, yes, the last video, I don't necessarily want to say yesterday, but the last video was talking about what that verse, Psalms 139, verse 23 through 24 means. It is David's prayer to God saying, God, I want to be you to be intimate with me. I want you to search me and I want you to show me. I want you to know me and then show me if there's any offensive way in me. And if you didn't see that one, please go back and watch that video because it is very powerful. I use the app Blue Letter Bible, so don't be thinking I'm all smart and stuff, but I just pressed the button and it broke down every single word in the original language in Hebrew and gave me the Strong's Dictionary meaning of it. And I learned so much. And I, I don't want you to miss that because I think that when you read that verse, um, what you're asking God to do is really to just search you inside and out. And someone heard me say one time that you have to give God permission to do that. And they were a little taken back and they said, what do you mean you have to give God permission to, to search you and know you? Because he's God. And, and, and they were exactly right. He is God. And God already knows everything about you. But when you come to a place where you want to know more about him, and about his character, and you begin diving in his word, and you come to a place where you trust the Lord, then you are coming to God and you're saying, God, I want you. I give you permission to come in here and shake me up. I want you, like David said in Psalms 139, to search me and to show me and to know me. And I want you to show me if there's any offensive way in me. And we learned in that last video that that means, show me if there's any pain that's causing me to avoid intimacy with you, God, or maybe avoid intimacy with others. Show me if there's grief or sorrow. Show me if I've set up an idol in my life, maybe my ministry, my family, my kids, my career, um, my own vanities. Would you just show me? And, and when you do that, you come into a place of intimacy with God that then with his help, you're able to move past those things that are a barrier to your victory. It doesn't mean God loves you any less, but if you are holding on to pain, if you're holding on to idols that you've set up in a place of God, if you are holding on to deadly emotions and grief and pain and sorrow, you're not going to be moving forward with God. You're not going to be experienced a victorious life. And that's what we want. And that's what Jesus died to give us. He didn't just die so you can go to heaven. He died so that you could know him intimately. So into him you can see. And how do you do that? You do that through studying the word of God. And you do that through prayer. You do that through conversation with God. But a lot of people don't do that. And I didn't do it for years. And I talked about in the first video, why? Because I was afraid. I was afraid of what intimacy God looked, with God looked like. Where would he ask me to go? What would he ask me to give up? Where would he take me? What would people think? I was not only afraid of him, I was petrified more so of man. But, you know, as I came into a deeper understanding of who God was through various circumstances, through finally giving up my life to him and saying, God, I don't want it anymore because I'm making a mess out of it. 
and I want you to come in and I want you to shake me up and I want you to direct my footsteps. Things changed. Things really changed. I shared with you why I didn't have an intimate relationship with God. I told you about my fear. A lot of it was because I didn't understand what that even meant. I was raised in church my whole life and I knew about heaven, I knew about hell, I knew about the judgment of God, but I did not understand the love of God. I did not understand that God said, come boldly to me, to my throne of grace, not judgment, but grace so that I can forgive you, so that I can lead you in a way that's gonna be victorious, so I can reveal my heart to you. I didn't understand that. So that was a reason why I didn't have intimacy with God because I didn't understand there was more than just going to church and sitting on a pew and saying a prayer before I ate and before I went to sleep, which are wonderful things, but that's all there was in my life when it came to my relationship with God. It was a now lay me down to sleep. And it was, um, Lord bless this food. And um, occasionally I'd flip open the Bible and do the point and read method <laughs> because I didn't understand how to study it. I didn't understand that if I studied the word of God, God would speak to me. So lack of understanding is another reason that we don't um, have intimacy with God. It's also a lack of trust. I think of all the things that I put my trust in every single day and uh, usually a ski boat and skis and people and you know if you I may wonder why I say ski boats I was a professional water skier for many years and for 35 years got off a dock and followed after a power source that could fail me while I stayed on a spiritual dock and did not follow after God seek after him because um like I said, I just didn't understand how. I, I was afraid. I was afraid of where he'd take me. Um, I also was just ignorant of his ways. And um, for many years, I probably didn't care. And so I didn't um, go after intimacy with God because I wanted my life the way I wanted it. As a teenager, I wanted to experience the life of a normal teen. And I knew that if I followed Jesus, normalcy would be gone. It was funny. I was in law school and my husband was in law school and we were sitting in a, in a feminism class. Now that was an eye opener for us. And I looked at Tim on the way home and I said, we're different. <laughs> we are different from the world because we want to be married and because we value each other as a man and a woman and the institution of marriage and God and faith. And it just was an eye opener. And um, I was afraid, you know, for many years that if I really was sold out to Jesus and was intimate with him, what would my friends think? What would people think? And I believe that that's another reason why people stay away from intimacy with God. Um, a lot of times, uh, it could be pride. It could be like, hey, I don't need God. I don't need him in my life. I'm doing just fine. I don't want him in my life. Maybe that's um, a reason for a lot of people. Fortunately, that wasn't um, something that ever crossed my mind, but really my own actions were saying that. I may not have thought I don't need God, but when I'm out doing things in my own strength, never considering to ask God to be a part of it, really, that is pride. That is me saying, God, I really don't need you here. I got it. And then what happens is we usually get to a place in our life where we realize we don't have it. And so, um, anyway, I don't know if that's a reason for you, but a lot of times people avoid intimacy because they're hiding something. They feel like if they get intimate with God, they'd be exposed. And they've got sin in their life. Think about Adam and Eve. When they sinned in the garden, they hid from God. They hid from Him. And um, God knew where they were, and He also knew what they had done but it made them feel dirty and it made them feel off. Um, I, I don't know why I just said off, but they just felt like they were off course maybe and they had messed up and so they hid. And that might be a reason um, someone you know or maybe even you are not stepping into an intimate relationship. Maybe in a, in a way you're afraid. You're afraid of what God um, thinks of you Maybe you're afraid that you can't live up to his standards. Maybe you're afraid that you've messed up so big, so you're hiding from that intimacy. 
I have a friend who um, he ended up in in pornography, and I asked him how it happened because he ended up being arrested for it. It had gotten down so many levels to where he was viewing children, and and um, he said, Christy, I had a problem, but instead of going to God and asking for help, and instead of going to my brothers and sisters in Christ, I just hid it. And I felt so dirty and I kept hiding from intimacy with God and hiding from intimacy with other people and I fell deeper and deeper into sin. And so a lot of times it's because you don't feel worthy to come. And God says, come, come to me, all you who are weary, come to me, all you who are heavy laden with sin, with religion, with pride, with emotions, and I'll give you rest. You don't have to hide from God. Maybe you're afraid of being rejected, not just by people, but by God. God's not going to reject you. He is a loving Father, and you don't have to worry about measuring up. You don't have to worry about um, not being loved by Him because He's already proven His love to you. And I'm just going to put my notes down for a second. I just want to talk to you because the Bible says before one day of your life ever came to being, that he knew about you and he allowed you to be born and he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And even though he knew what you would do over 2000 years ago, Jesus Christ laid his life down for you, for you, even though knowing all that you would do. And so I want to encourage you today. Don't hide. Don't run. Lay down the pride. Lay down your unbelief. And come running to him and say, God, into me, I want you to see. Give him permission to come in. Give him permission to shake things up. And you will find yourself coming to a place of intimacy with God that leads you to victory. Victory over your circumstances. Victory over wrong thinking. Victory over just all the, the pain in your heart and your mind. And you'll come to a place of freedom. Well, I thought we were going to finish everything today, but I got one more thing I want to talk to you about. And so I'm just going to end this video and come right back on with a new jacket. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but every shirt's the same. I just keep putting on new jackets so that you can see that the videos are different. So I'm going to go in my closet there, pick out a new wardrobe and come right back out. Now you know my secret and talk to you about one last thing. God bless you. Hope you've enjoyed this victorious living moment.